Good morning. Um, I hope I can do this without becoming emotional. So um, I have a there I was moment. I've had lots of there I was moments with Christ, but this one is pretty recent, so please um, bear with me in this. So about um, four weeks ago, my family and I visited Kennywood Park. And um, while walking into the park that particular day, and I've been there many times with my family, but walking into the park that particular day, there was a lot of tension, um, a lot going on, a lot of young people just pretty much unsupervised, a lot of arguing. But we were there on a special event with um, the military. My husband is in the, the military, and so we decided, hey, this is it's gonna be okay. We're gonna go into the park, we're gonna have a good time, and my kids have been really, looking forward to this. And so not only did I have our children, but we had their friends um, alongside of them. So we go into the park and the entire time, there were two young men that stood out and everywhere I went in, in the park on that particular day, I saw these two young men. Um, one was dressed in total black with a hoodie and a mask pretty much upon his whole face. Only thing I could really see was the eyes. Um, and there was another young man alongside of him that was dressed kind of weird for the day as well. But I just kind of brushed it off. But the interesting thing is God gives us a spirit of discernment and he gives us warnings about things before they happen. And I couldn't understand why the entire time throughout that park, no matter where I went, these two young men were there. So I come from a career in law enforcement, and my students all know because I tell those stories, and I've been through a lot in the field of law enforcement. But one of the things that God gave me, and I don't like to say racial profiling, but police officers profile. So on that particular day, that kicked in, and I began to start thinking something's not right, something's not right. Um, so my, my husband and I and my daughter and her best friend we stayed at the park until about six o'clock and that's when they started doing, you know, the ghost chasing you around and nobody's chasing me, okay? I'm not doing that. So it was time to go. It was time to get out of there. My daughter was upset, her friend was upset, but I knew it was time to go. It was getting dark, it was smoke everywhere, just crazy. And people were everywhere, but I left my two sons there with their friends and my oldest son was responsible for the youngest one. So my there I was moment came about 10 o'clock that night. I got a phone call from my oldest son and he's screaming, mommy, mommy, they're shooting. They're shooting and I'm going to die. And I can't find Josiah. I can't find our, my brother. I can't find him. Um, so at this point, as a mom, you do what you think you're supposed to do. I'm starting to grab my stuff. I don't live anywhere near Kennywood, but I'm starting to grab my things. And I'm like, I need to go to this park. But that was not what God wanted me to do. And so we're dialing, my husband's dialing our youngest son. Apparently his phone had died, but we couldn't, we couldn't locate him. So he was stuck somewhere in the park. So my son calls back and he goes, I'm out of the park, but I need to go back because I need to get him. Now the, the shooting is in full bloom. They're shooting. They're there's two young men, the two young men that I saw the entire day were the shooters. Um, so my son is running back toward the crowd. People are running out of the park. They're trampling over everybody, but he couldn't still find his brother. He ended up getting back into the park and he did find Josiah and Josiah was right there where the shooting actually happened. He actually saw everything happen. And he's completely traumatized still right now, and we're trying to deal with getting him through the trauma. Um, my, my, I just give God all the glory, honor, and praise because there have been times that I've stood beside moms that have lost their sons, and I came so close to losing my babies, both of them, um, on that day, and not just the two of them, their friends as well. And so the entire time I'm on the phone with my son's best friend's mom, Jackie, and she's trying to calm me down, I'm trying to calm her down, and I just went into a time of prayer. And I just started to talk to Jesus. I just started to pray and ask him, please don't take my babies away from me right now. Please don't do this. My son found Josiah, like I said, he was right there, um, barely missed 
from being shot, from being one, and it would have been an accidental shooting because they weren't shooting at my kids. They were shooting at each other, but we just had three homicides or two women killed by accidental shootings in the north side. So it could have been an accident. And I'm gonna close with saying this. The next morning, I, um, I just took some time with God and I asked him, I said, Lord, I didn't say why, I said, why not? Why not mine? Why not my two children? And he said, because I love you and I love them and you would not have been able to handle this and I have a purpose for their lives. And that was all I needed to hear from God to let me know that they will live and not die and that he has a purpose for who they are. And he has a purpose for me as a mom. So it was a wake up call in so many ways, not just for me, but for my children to understand that Jesus is Lord and Savior. They know that, they, they've been taught, but this was a wake up call for them to serve him the way that they're supposed to serve him. And so, and talking to my son, and we're still working through it because he says to me, I could have died. Both of them could have died. And I say to them, yes, just thank God for sparing your life. And I thank him for sparing me as well. Because I would not have been able to stand before you all this morning and to speak this way. I'm so thankful that I still have my children with me. And I'm able to be here on this morning and to give him the glory, the honor, and the praise for being so, so amazing. So I wanted to share that with you all. And I made it through without crying. So I'm getting better. So thank you. Thank you.